Tom Ogle. In 1978, at the age of 19, a young man called Tom Ogle stumbled upon an invention by pure luck that could have changed the automotive industry. It all started when he was fiddling around with his lawnmower and accidentally punctured a hole in its fuel tank. As opposed to patching it up, he used a vacuum line and ran it from the tank straight into the carburetor inlet. Ogle was amazed when the mower kept running, but the fuel level hardly moved, and it continued to tick over for 96 hours straight on half a tank of fuel. Over the next five years, Ogle made hundreds of experiments on his own Ford Galaxy, but removed the carburetor and fuel pump and replaced them with a secret box he called a filter, and the car went from over 20 miles per gallon to 100. Ogle maintained he was able to achieve this due to his secret pressurized and vaporized fuel system that injected fumes directly into the engine's firing chamber, meaning the device would not only get incredible mileage, but exhaust emissions were also practically non-existent. Now at age 24, he notified the press of his invention and claimed he was going to showcase it by driving from El Paso, Texas to Deming, New Mexico, aiming to complete the 200 mile trip on just two gallons of gas. Reporters and experts turned up to witness this feat and inspected his car for hidden fuel tanks, and when they were unable to find any discrepancies and Ogle made the journey, he was hailed as the inventor of an energy-saving device that also cleaned up emissions. However, despite the initial excitement and funding, there were rumors that other people had similar patents, including General Motors, who had patented a similar device several years earlier. All of a sudden, everyone who shared Ogle's passion for his fuel and emission saving process started to wipe their hands with him and suggested it would never work. His royalties and payments stopped, and the man who was once offered $25 million by Shell Oil was broke. His marriage ended and he became dependent on drink and drugs. Then in 1981, Tom was shot outside of a bar in El Paso and died late that night at a friend's apartment. His death was recorded as a suicide after autopsy reports indicated he had overdosed on drugs and alcohol. Although many of his friends said he would never have killed himself despite his current struggles, and that he had been saying for a while that he thought someone was putting drugs in his drink. The person who shot him was never found. Many questions still remain about Tom Ogle, like who shot him, why were no cars ever fitted with his invention, and what happened to the so-called patents for similar fuel-saving devices. In Tom's own words, when asked if he was afraid of oil companies or the Arabs coming after him, he responded with, no, not anymore, I've had too much publicity. If I kept my invention a secret, I might be worrying but there's nothing to worry about anymore. The question is, was Tom right, and was his invention that well known, or is this the first time you've heard about it? Lester Hendershot Lester Jennings Hendershot was born in 1898 in West Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, and grew up to be an inventor of many practical items. His most significant was the groundbreaking generator that was powered by nothing but the Earth's magnetic field that was able to power several appliances in his home. Needless to say, top scientists were unable to explain it and knew that if it could be perfected, it could eliminate the need for conventional electricity in every household around the planet. It all came about in 1925 when Lester was taking flying lessons and realized the need for a 100% reliable compass. While trying to produce one, he realized the power of the Earth's magnetic field and it gave him the idea to produce a motor utilizing this free energy. As work progressed on the motor, he began to realize that a magnetically powered motor may not work as well as a magnetically powered generator, so he concentrated on making one. Soon it was making news headlines, and even Colonel Lindenberg and the military began showing interest. However, the initial flurry of excitement worn off, as many started to claim Hendershot was a fake, even going to the length of displaying a supposed generator of his in front of the public and proving that it did not work. After this, it became apparent to those who supported Hendershot that there were people who were set on discrediting the invention. Hendershot still continued for many years with his free energy generator, and in the late 1960s, he was convinced he had an opportunity to present his invention to the US Navy. He produced two models and a 56-page proposal, but there was little interest. Then a year later in April 1961, Hendershot's son returned from school and found his father dead. His death was recorded as suicide, although no investigation was ever carried out. Many, including his family, believe he was killed as he was a threat to the large energy companies after he continued to progress with his invention. It was also reported that Hendershot had been approached by a large corporation who he refused to name that apparently told him to stop all activity in connection with his motor or generator. All Hendershot would say was that if he was successful with his generator, it would be a serious threat to their multi-million dollar industry. 
is thought he accepted $25,000 on the condition that he did not build another unit for 20 years. He also told his family at times that he feared for his life. It's wrong to blame someone for being responsible for Hendershot's death, but given the fact he was convinced his generator did produce power and perfected could be revolutionary, it seems no one was interested in what he had come up with, and you can't help but wonder why. The Palladium Cigarette Every year, around 5 million smokers and over half a million non-smokers exposed to secondhand smoke die from tobacco-related deaths. But what if in the 1950s, one scientist came up with a cigarette without the carcinogenic chemicals? His name was Dr. James D. Mould, and he worked for the North Carolina tobacco company Liggett & Myers. His role was to test the harmful effects of tobacco on lab mice, and through his studies, he was able to isolate the materials in cigarettes that caused skin cancer. Armed with this knowledge, he started a project to produce a safer cigarette that would eliminate or at least minimize the harmful ingredients. Mould's project became known as Project XA, and at first he had the backing of Liggett and Myers. It took James 25 years to produce a cigarette that relied on the use of palladium and magnesium nitrate to destroy the substances in cigarette smoke that caused cancer. He called it the palladium cigarette. However, after talks with lawyers, Liggett and Myers withdrew their backing. It's hard to believe, but lawyers had advised that by launching a safer product would lead to lawsuits from customers of their original product, as they would be admitting they were unsafe. Don't forget, this was around the time where it was fashionable and in fact deemed healthy to smoke cigarettes. Unable to continue with his work, James was requested by Liggett and Myers not to publish anything about his findings, and 25 years of work was abandoned. At this time, Liggett and other tobacco companies continued to sell cancer-causing cigarettes, with the general public unaware of the harm they were causing. Dr. Mould had effectively been gagged by the company. He died in 2002, knowing he could have saved the lives of countless people if it were not for the tobacco companies and their refusal to admit that they knew how dangerous smoking was. What's even more upsetting is that now tobacco companies have to state how dangerous smoking is, but nothing seems to have come about from Dr. Mould's work and this could have happened many years ago, potentially preventing an untold number of lives. Dmitry Petronov This next person is the most mysterious in this video, but the information on him is seriously lacking. We do know he definitely existed, and that he definitely died under suspicious circumstances. His name was Dmitry Petronov, and he was born in Kiev in 1952, but went on to study at the best engineering school in Berlin and later worked for an aviation company for over 20 years. In his spare time, Petronov invented things, his first being a very bright LED flashlight that gained some interest although was considered expensive. He then created a plasma battery, which he maintained could operate for three years without being recharged. He went on to use one to apparently power his entire house. Now, Dmitry admitted the battery was technically nuclear, but only emitted the same levels of radiation as a mobile phone. As word got around, in 2009, Dmitry was invited to visit a military lab in Moscow to demonstrate his device in front of generals. Petronov was gone for a week and took a duplicate device with him, which the military kept. When he returned, his sister said he was very excited, and although he said he couldn't talk about the details of the meeting, he told her the military had agreed to fund him as long as the battery was only used in Russia. Then, just a week after the meeting, Dmitry had a visit from a smartly dressed man who introduced himself as Vladimir. After the visit, according to his sister, Dmitry seemed different. Just a few months later, on February the 13th, 2010, Dmitry went out for a coffee as he usually did on a Saturday morning, then picked up some bread from a bakery, and that was the last time he was seen or heard from. When his sister returned from the police station after reporting him missing, there was no electricity in the house, and it turns out that neighbours saw two military men entering her and her brother's property and leaving with Dimitrov's plasma battery. Two weeks later, and no closer to finding out what happened to her brother, his sister received a parcel containing Dimitri's watch. Now, what happened next I cannot be certain of, but over a year after his disappearance, a decomposing body was pulled from Russia's Volga River, but their teeth and hands were missing, making identification impossible. There is speculation that this was Dmitry Pedronov, the man who apparently powered his entire house on a single homemade plasma battery, because if this wasn't his body, then where has he gone? <laughs>